Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. So today we're going to be having a quick look into React query mutations. If you enjoy this kind of content, please consider subscribing and let's get right into it. So if you're not too familiar with React query, I'd recommend checking out my initial tutorial. Um, I'll link it somewhere above uh, on getting started. This tutorial here is going to pick up exactly where we left off uh, from there, which is we've built a very simple application that um, makes a, a query to the GitHub API just to fetch my gists, and then it just displays the gists on the screen here. Now for this tutorial, I've made one difference, which is I've added a mock API here. So instead of actually reaching out to the real uh, GitHub, it's actually all going through my mock API. And I've just done this using MSW. Um, if you're not too familiar with that, I've got a video on that as well. And all this is doing is basically returning a list of gists uh, in, in kind of an uh, in-memory database, I guess, which is basically just this array. And uh, the main reason I've done this is so I can add my own post method um, so that we can basically add data into it because we're going to be uh, exploring mutations and in this case, the, the HTTP post uh, method for this for this tutorial. Cool, so let's get started. So we're just going to follow the same format um, as my last tutorial. We're going to add in the function to do the, the fetching here. So I'm just going to add a post gists function, which is an async function. It takes in um, a specific gist, and it's just going to make a fetch to, I'm going to give it the same API, but in this case, it's going to be a, a post method, content type of application JSON, and we're just going to stringify the body. Um, for this specific response, we're not going to return anything, uh, but if it fails, we're going, to, we're going to throw an error here. So now that that's there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a very simple form to my uh, web app, and this form is just going to have an input which is required and it's just going to have uh, an add button and then we're just going to fill in a kind of a shell of a on submit function here and we're just going to prevent the default so it doesn't kind of do any um, default actions on the event we're going to have a reference to the gist input we're going to format it um, in the way that the api expects and then we're just going to clear the value when you hit enter so if i save this now and i come back here um, all this does now, I enter some data, I hit enter, it's just gonna clear it, it's not It's not posting anything yet. So let's start by adding an implementation that doesn't use React here at all. So we'll just do it, you know, uh, plain React, see how it goes. Um, hopefully we'll start to see some of the, I guess the, the fallbacks uh, of going with that approach and the, the complexities. And then what we'll do is we'll replace it with React Query and hopefully see it's a bit simpler to, to use. So what we can do is, of course, we can just use the post gists uh, function directly. We can pass in the data and then just hook into the callback. So in the callback, all we're going to do is um, clear the value there. And at this point, what we have is we've got the input that if I write test and I hit enter, it's going to, you know, call our post function, which hopefully you can, yeah, you can see there that's post is 200. But of course, it's not refetching the data once it's been updated. So we've updated the data, but now we need a way to tell the app, okay, you know, the, the data has changed. Can you, you know, fetch it again? Luckily, we're already using use query here um, to fetch the data. So that exposes a function um, called refetch, which we can use. So I'm going to take this refetch and we could, you know, just call out that refetch um, once the post is successful. If I save that and I refresh here on the right hand side, let me just clear all this, this data again. I'll do test add and you can see it's added uh, two additional network requests. Again, the first one is the post and the second one it's basically then said, okay, now additionally fetch the data and we can see the test is there. ASD, ASD, there we go. So we've got this bit working, um, but you know, it'd be nice if we didn't have to explicitly call the refetch after every time we call this post gists function, especially if we're using this elsewhere. Um, it should kind of just know to, to update the data uh, when we call that function. And we'll see how React Query can help us with that later on. Um, another thing is, Let's say, for example, now we wanted to um, add basically loading states uh, into our uh, post function. So let's say we want to add a spinner or we wanted to, you know, disable uh, the, the button uh, or the input. You know, now we need to start thinking about creating our own pieces of state. So we need to, you know, add a use state for some sort of loading loading states. Um, and then within here, we need to hook in and, you know, start setting this state to, to loading or error or success, depending on, uh, depending on the scenario, basically. So that's already started to you know, get a bit more complicated than, than we'd like. So let's just bring in React Query now and see how it helps. So I'm just gonna remove this again. Um, and what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna call out to another hook. Uh, and this hook is gonna be called use mutation. Uh, let's just refresh that. So use mutation is the hook for, for mutations. And the first argument it takes in is the, um, the query function, right? So you can see, or sorry, the mutation function. So this mutation function is basically our post gists function, right? 
So we can pass in post gists and um, it's just going to pass in all our variab variables in, into this function here. So that's fine. And what returns is, well, it also returns the, the status similar to the use query, which we'll use in a moment. But one of the other things it returns is this mutate function. And this is the function that we're going to use to actually call out um, to our mutation, right? Um, we can do this either in a synchronous or asynchronous way. In this case, I'm just going to stick with async um, because that's already how my, my data is set up. So I'm going to go mutate async and, you know, we can rename this to uh, add gist. And what we can do is just replace this with add gist, keep then save it. And hopefully that all just works exactly the same. So that's just a like for like replacement there. Um, so let's just clear this and make sure it all works. Hit the test. That's all we can find. Now, one benefit of having the mutation is basically we don't need to refetch this um, within the component level in theory. We can extract it out at the hook level, which means we can share it across different components, right? So if I remove this refetch, um, take it away from here as well, what we can do is within the hook, we can add an additional options block. And within this options block, we have basically callbacks to you know different states of the, of the uh, mutation. So we have on success callback here, which we can access all the data if we wanted to. Uh, in this case, I'm not going to access anything. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to say once this mutation succeeds, hook into the query client, which we've you know previously created, and we're going to use this invalidate queries function. Um, and I'll tell you what that does in a second. And what this takes in is the query key. And what we're going to do is we're going to pass in the gist data query key. So the invalidate queries uh, function basically does two things. Firstly, it invalidates the query, so it just sets the um, the data from the query key, which is our gist data, as invalid. So marks it as invalid within React Query. And then what it does is it also triggers a fetch. So we're basically saying, all right, once this succeeds, um, it's almost identical as triggering that refetch um, in this scenario and in any other kind of component that's using it. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go over to this network tab. I'm going to hit test here, hit add, and you can see that we've now got the exact same functionality, but we didn't have to explicitly call call the refetch, um, which is quite nice. And the other kind of added benefit, like I said, is we have the status here. So we have the status. Of course, I need to rename that to, let's just call it mutation status. And now we can just use this mutation status wherever we need to. So like I said earlier on, um, as an example, we want to set these two to um, disabled if, uh, if it's loading. So we can just hook into the mutation status and just check that that's uh, Oops, check that that's loading basically. There we go. And hopefully we can see this. If not, we can add a, a quick delay. So I'm gonna add, there we go. Well, what I'll do is um, I'm gonna go over to my mock API and I'm just gonna add a quick delay here. So I think it's just delay. I'll just add a delay of, um, I think that's two seconds. And we'll jump back over here and we'll just add this one more time test. And as I click onto this, you can see that it's being disabled for a couple of seconds and then it's been added. So you can see this is a, a hook that can be reused uh, across different components. But again, we're keeping the kind of the logic within the component super simple and we're delegating most of this kind of server side um, uh, call logic into the into React query and, and the use mutation hooks. Cool, so I think that's probably a good amount to get you started with React query mutations. Um, if you want to dive into uh, any more functionality around your React query, let me know in the comments below uh, and I'll be happy to do that. Um, but I think that's everything I want to cover in this video. So thank you very much for watching. Have a good day and I'll see you in the next one.